Greetings, world of the internet. I am Rugai Sun, and I am going to attempt to do a spoiler free review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, much like everybody else who went to go see it the day before on a special Thursday showing, there's probably going to be a lot of mixed reviews. So, right now, as a disclaimer, if you're going to go see the movie with an extremely high expectations because of how you've seen the first Guardians movie, I would recommend extremely to please lower expectations down to when you went to go see the first Guardians movie. With that said, I'm going to take a slight detour. Uh, reason being is because the movie had three trailers. Uh, one of them being Spider-Man Homecoming, which is something that we've all seen before. Um, but the other two is actually a DC... Actually, two of them were DC movies that's actually coming out this year. The first one is the Justice League movie. And... Alright, to be completely honest with you, I was not feeling the trailer. You know, it... The trailer, they put, okay, DC put too much in the Justice League trailer. And, you know, some of you DC only, yeah, some of you DC only fans would probably say, you know, it's going to be better than the Avengers. It's going to be better than all of the Marvel movies put together. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm just not feeling it. The second DC trailer was the Wonder Woman one. It looks interesting... But, I don't know, it, the trailer for Wonder Woman, it just, it looks good, but at the same time, I can probably know what's already going to happen. Again, DC, you're putting too much content in your trailers. Dial it back some. Please, for the sake of every comic book fan out there, DC, please, tone back the contents in your trailers. For the sake of your movies. Alright, so now we got that out of the way. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was actually a pretty damn good movie. I'm talking... Oof. Again, I am not going to spoil anything about it, except a lot of your cast... A lot of the cast from the first one have reprised their roles in the second one. Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, Zoe Saldana as Gamora, uh, Dave Bautista as Drax, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon, Vin Diesel as Groot. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. Karen Gillan? 
I think. Jillian? Jillian? I'm sorry if I butchered your name, your, your last name. Please help us out on this. All right. Uh, she's as Nebula. Michael Roker is back as Yondu. And a couple of from of new faces. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is in the movie. Briefly, but he is in the movie. Kurt Russell is also in the movie. He's also new. Again, not going to say who he plays or what his character is, but Kurt Russell's character plays a vital role. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the Mantis looking girl goes by the name, you know, Mantis. Uh, Palm Clementif. I think that's how you pronounce her name, or at least last name. And Elizabeth Debicki. She goes by the name, or her character, I should say, goes by the name of Aisha. When you go see the movie, you're going to recognize the name. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with her work, I'm just going to read off a couple of... Uh, Movies that she was in, uh, Everest in 2015, she was also in The Man from Uncle two years ago, uh, The Great Gatsby, like I said, the movie itself was pretty damn good, again, like I said before in the disclaimer, please lower your expectations. Like as you would when you go see the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, There, okay. I'm going to say this right here. There is no Infinity Stone in this movie. For those of you wondering, no Infinity Stone. Okay, it's... There's really no need. Okay. probably actually the only single spoiler I will say about this movie. Also, the movie is like a nice side story. It's still within the Marvel Cinematic Universe where it's, you know, you're still taking You know, like, in the same realm as, like, you know, Iron Man, Captain America. It's still within that same realm. But at the same time, since it's a sequel... They went in a bit of a different direction. While still maintaining the events leading up to... Avengers Infinity War.
the music for Guardians 2 was actually pretty good. It didn't overshadow anything. You know, it actually helped accentuate the movie in parts where it needed to be. I mean, already there's people probably buying the soundtrack as we speak. Or have already bought the soundtrack. Or probably finding the soundtrack on YouTube or whatever. Google, the Apple Store. Anyways. Yeah, the movie had serious moments. And it had a lot of funny moments. And it took a stab. <laughs> Not going to say what, but when you do go see it, you're going to see where they took the stab at. Um, overall, I would give this movie a 9. It's a little different from some of my, uh, my couple of my other reviews I have done or helped with by giving it like a 9.5 or whatever. I'm giving it a 9 because although it was great few of the scenes would be slightly rewritten better Um, maybe done a couple of things differently, but overall it was highly enjoyable. Now, for those of you wondering why I said this was a nice side story... I'm actually going to clarify that better. The reason why I say this is because I don't want to say it's a distraction. Because, you know, as good as this movie is, again, you know, it's still part of the cinematic universe. It's still helping all the other Marvel movies and possibly TV shows if they ever decided to bring them in for the Infinity War. Really all eyes are going to be glued to Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, the trailer for that one is basically what everyone has seen online, whether it be like Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. You know, it's... It's the same trailer as everybody has seen. But the reason why I say eyes are on Spider-Man Homecoming is 
how that story would play out. Like, would this be, like, Peter Parker's defining moment where he goes from local hero where he's just basically helped like everyone who isn't super we'll just say like trying to help keep new the streets of New York safe or will he be joining the Avengers that's what I meant by eyes are going to be glued to Spider-Man Homecoming and I'm actually curious about it as well again Guardians of the Galaxy is a phenomenal movie It, like I said, it's a nice distraction because this one deals with a bit in the single character development. but also in terms of team-based development. Like I said, I give this movie a 9. It'll probably hold maybe we'll just say within the top four in terms of like, you know, box office hits. Other than that, I do recommend you go watch this movie. It does some explaining. Again, I'm not going to say what. If you need a refresher about, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy, you can watch Volume 1, either on Amazon, um, bought it off of Google, the iStore, you bought the DVD, you bought the Blu-ray, or wherever you found a copy you can watch it again get yourself re-familiarized and then you can go see volume 2 with that said thank you for watching this spoiler free review If it isn't, if you're going to be, if you want spoilers, you know, I'm not going to be offended when you go to various channels and they're just spoiling the whole movie for you. I'm not going to be offended. But if you want like a little... Like, if you don't want to know the movie, 
but you want to know how somebody else thinks you know there's a lot of people out there that have done uh have done like you know spoiler free because you know they're like myself they're respecting other moviegoers that want to go see it for themselves and judge the movie by their own merits so yeah sorry for the little dis distraction there but thank you so much for taking the time to watch the spoiler free review and if you want to check out some of my playthroughs on games on this very same channel or you can check out some of my other reviews for games I did before and as always for those of you who are gaming game hard but game for fun. Take care, guys.